Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. It is the Earthmaster here on this end of the microphone. About 11.20 p.m. California time, June 28th, 2024. Almost into the month of July already. I can't believe it. 3.3, uh, the latest earthquake here. Fairly deep, about 150 kilometers deep in the red flag. Uh, looks like the southern end here of the Hikurangi subduction zone. New Zealand did also see a four-pointer up there. We'll check that out in just a little bit. Do you want to cover the um, activity real quick first at the uh, New York area or New York State? I'll just that back to uh, normal here in a minute. Uh, outside the Lake Ontario region, seen a 3.4 earthquake earlier this evening coming in about 10 kilometers deep there near Henderson, New York. Now, this was felt over a broad area. These earthquakes of... Uh, even small magnitudes are often felt over a broader area in this area east of the Rockies just due to the type of rock out here. It's old, brittle, and uh, it, it uh, is felt quite a distance there. As you can see here on the map, quite a few folks did report feeling that earthquake out there around the New York State region. And... Um, not a big earthquake. Definitely not, you know, not one that would anyone could say, yeah, that's a, a unusual activity, unusual earthquake. Um, if you look at, I, I pulled up historical data here real quick just to show you guys. I do this quite often when there's areas of interest. Now, today's earthquake, 3.4, right there in the orange circle. Within this region here, we did see some earthquake activity last year. About I think we had a 3.6 there. Same region. Uh, most of the elevated earthquake activity and larger quakes occur over here across these mountain ranges, 6.3 back in 1732 uh, near Montreal, Quebec, Canada. That was a big one out there. It's been quite a while, but as you can see here on the map, earthquakes do happen out here periodically in this area. As you can see up and down the coast here as well, Concord, uh, um, well, New Hampshire area seen a 6.5 back in 1638. So big ones can happen out here, anywhere. Um, there's numerous fault systems that, that are out here. And if you think about it, man, that's been, wow, that's a long time ago. How do they figure out that it was a 6.5? Well, the geologists and scientists and whatnot, they have a way to um, look at faults and, and see an earthquake, pretty much in the study of the rocks and whatnot. Not going to go into that, but uh, yeah, even down here in New York, these guys can get some bigger earthquakes as well. So a lot of time has passed. We've just been very fortunate enough out here to not experience a large damaging earthquake with our advanced infrastructure and our communication systems. So a little earthquake in New York State today. Not a big deal. Few folks did feel it. Few folks didn't. Oklahoma, Texas, New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet. Uh, I was looking at the seismograph stations here earlier. I don't know what's floating around on the social media. Someone said the New Madrid seismic zone was shaking like crazy, that they had a big earthquake out here. Well, I, I think what they were looking at is, it may have showed up here on the seismograph stations, is the sur surface wave from that big seven-pointer uh, late last night in the Peru area that did create a huge surface wave across uh, pretty much a lot of the seismograph stations around the globe so I'm assuming that's what they were talking about but they were throwing up some thumbnails out there saying that the New Madrid had a big earthquake and you know it's it would show up on the seismograph stations I really think everyone would be reporting it right you got some huge population densities out there so big earthquake Nobody notices, that means a false quake. That, somebody just fear mongering for who knows what. Anyway, that's quiet for now. Oklahoma, Texas area, some typical movement out there tonight. Uh, Southern California, handful of earthquakes out here. Really nothing, a major concern. I notice here on the globe that we do have a, a four-pointer into the Gulf of California, or it looks like Baja California area on the plate boundary. There's that four-pointer. Now, this is south here. Um, that's not going to be this one. That's not going to be the 2.5. But it is going to be a four-pointer in that mix there. I'm not for sure why they didn't show a four-pointer. They show a 2.5, which is in there. 
but they won't show the larger earthquake activity. That's a little odd. Either way, with this enhancement going on here recently, we need to watch areas of Southern California. It just it seems like it's always been playing out this way. Any elevated activity here across the Gulf of California, Baja California, that normally leads to an uptick there in earthquake activity across Southern California. Not a whole lot going on now, but we'll continue to keep an eye on that overnight. Northern California, a handful of earthquakes up here in the Cascadia subduction zone. On that note, let's go check out the trimmer map here tonight. I'll try not to keep this a super long update. I want to get off here, get a little sleep. Um, 300. And 27 epicenters of trimmer, mostly down here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone once again. And uh, we've been we've been heightened. This is uh, you know one of the more active periods that we've seen since uh, end of 2022. Uh, even though the daily counts haven't been up you know in the in the thousand range, this has been a long duration Cascadia event. Uh, and of course watching some earthquake activity down here on the southern end where we have been seeing it over the past few weeks here uh, of course also some volcanoes out here showing some earthquake activity nothing of you know major interest yet but uh, mount st helens still seeing some earthquake activity underneath this area uh where's that explosion that must be further south but uh, yeah um very shallow for some of those, but uh, the majority of those earthquakes have been uh, down there about six kilometers or so deep. Very small earthquakes. Mount Rainier as well. Um, another earthquake here in the uh, Juan de Fuca, straight of Juan de Fuca area. Going to be a 26 kilometer deep, 1.2. Nothing big going on, right? For now. Let's see what we got going on in Hawaii. This has been an area of interest here recently with the ongoing earthquake activity here across the summit region well just south of the summit area towards the upper east rift zone twos and ones appear to be the uh, magnitudes out here today so let's go check out the latest information here from the usgs site where kilauea volcano is still sitting at a yellow and advisory I'm watching this area specifically right around here i was checking out this tilt meter earlier as well notice that's still going up uh, this specific region is just showing a little enhancement here in this area. Overall, deformation shows a general uptick here across this area. If we look at the deformation data here, I'm just glad this information is up and running and available to the public. Um, we're still up there. It does look like this most recent inflation event did not peak out at the previous level here a few days, uh, 27th, 28th a day or so ago, um, but still overall inflated out here across the uh, summit and the upper east rift zone. But uh, nothing of any uh, eruption yet. Just keep an eye on this area specifically. Look at that little linear fashion right here in this region. So keep, keep, uh, keep an eye on that. All right, further out and about here, I know uh, New Zealand definitely seen some activity out there. So let's go over here to the GeoNet server, see what we have going on here real quick. There's that four-pointer. It looks like it got downgraded. Originally a 4.1 North Island area. This earthquake was felt uh, pretty broadly over the area with 1,515 reports there across the area, mainly of North Island region. Looks like somebody down there around the Christchurch area maybe uh, reported that one earthquake, but... Uh, um, definitely seeing a little bit of uptick out here. Um, looking for some deeper movement quakes. There's that 3.3, 150 kilometers deep. Uh, it looks like it's underneath South Island area, but if you think about it, there's a subduction zone, the southern end of the Hikurangi, um, and there's the northern end up here. And that earthquake is underneath here, but associated with that subduction zone at that depth. So definitely, um, you know, some interesting earthquake activity taking place down there. It's been a little while since they've seen a major earthquake. Uh, they sit on a major plate boundary. They got that major subduction zone there just on the eastern area of um, North Island. And, uh, you know, it's... It's earthquake country. There's a lot of earthquakes that take place out here, so definitely got to watch that. Uh, 4.3 earth or 4.5, the latest up here, 423 kilometers deep outside of the Fiji area. 
out here outside of this little horseshoe bend. Uh, aside from that, um, let's see if we got anything major going on out here. Latest a 4.8 Papua New Guinea area down there in the uh, Chile region. Still seeing some aftershock activity. It looks like um, that's a pretty decent size aftershock. Let's see what we got here. 5.2 earlier this evening it looks like. With a handful of earthquakes further down south. But uh, really, just, I mean, that's very typical to see that many uh, aftershocks there following a larger quake. I'm sure there's many more earthquakes than what the USGS and the EMSC globe are showing here, but uh, that's what they got there for now. Uh, Middle America Trend showing somewhat elevated activity, and there's a the movement up into the uh, Baja, California area. So we'll keep an eye. You know, Southern California is toned down here a little bit in the last couple days, but we're watching that movement migrate a little bit north up here across that plate boundary. And that could be a sign that we uh, maybe be looking at some uptick there across Southern California here soon. Uh, extreme Southern, or the uh, Western end here of the Aleutian Trench. Got a four-pointer coming in earlier this evening. Uh, rest of the uh, globe out here, the Atlantic Ocean, fairly quiet, no major quakes to report. And you got the typical movement out here across the Middle East and the Turkey area. Really nothing of major activity for now. Uh, space weather activity, any uh, roars kicking up? Yeah, kind of kind of called out this morning. I knew we weren't going to see any elevated activity out here. That was, uh, that was an interesting event that took place this morning. Um, just happened to be... A BZ component sharply pointing south allowed a lot of that solar wind stream to flow in and create those G4, severe G4 class storm to kick up this morning. And uh, it's since then, obviously, it's calmed down. KP index up around almost an 8. Pretty impressive. Uh, but it uh, looks like that's not uh, in the forecast here for now. Looks like maybe some minor unsettled conditions here, but uh, really not expecting much. The flare threat uh, remains somewhat moderate to low, looking at 99% chance for a C flare. M flare 50, X flare around 5% chance. And a look at the magnetogram image here of uh, these sunspots are just uh, a little disappointing. There's not a whole lot to look at out here in terms of complexity within a, any of these sunspots, to be honest. We do have a region out here on the northeastern limb that um, has not been named yet. I think that's a former sunspot. Let me go over here to the far side watch here. And um, no, I guess not. 37. Uh, let's see what we got here. Hold on, stand by for a second here. That looks like an older uh, image down here. Hold on a second. That's a little confusing. Let me see what we got. Okay, I see what that is. 3723 uh, over here. Here's all our clustering going on. Far side. I'm looking for this area up here, but I'm really not seeing anything on the far side of any interest. But it does look like there's something coming around the bend here when we look at the... Uh, uh, magnetogram image. There's a, a little sunspot here. Kind of hard to tell how large it is. There's a little bit of uh, growth back behind here on the extreme eastern limb. So we'll watch this one here in the coming days. Maybe we'll get a better look at that tomorrow. Um, there's all the sunspots out there. A lot of them, but hey, look at that. A's and B's. Not a whole lot of complexity out there. Uh, Storm Prediction Center out here really... Um, you know, I don't think we got any major severe th threats out here. This is for the day on Saturday. As we look, uh, a little 5% chance for tornadoes up there across the extreme northeast and some wind. And maybe a little bit of hail out there as well. I want to check out the um, Hurricane Center because we do have some development out here in the Atlantic uh, with Tropical Storm Barrel. So maximum sustained winds there, about 40 miles per hour. Central pressure around 1,006 millibars there. Really uh, not a big thing yet, but it is moving out into some open waters. Warm 
ocean waters out here. We got to watch that. See exactly where this thing is going to head. Right now, the forecast does call for this thing to strengthen a little bit. Let me see if we got uh, a little bit bigger image here so you guys can see. Uh, strengthen into a hurricane. Looks like this weekend and head its way, uh, make its way towards the Gulf area, Gulf of Mexico, across the Caribbean here. So, going to have to watch that. It does remain steady and strong as a hurricane, far as the uh, the strength of this. Let's see what we got. That's the time frame. Normally, there's a little graph out here that will tell us um, how strong are the winds that we're expecting. But uh, let's see here. I'm not really seeing that. Either way, that's something definitely to watch here. Let's see if we can spot it on the um, numerical models. We'll go over to the Western Atlantic right here. This should give us a good little view of it. Here's the states down here, Florida, Gulf of Mexico right here, Puerto Rico area. And as we put this into motion here, I'm sure we'll see it. There it is. Tightly wound up. Uh, that'll be Hurricane Barrel, right? I think that's the name. And it looks like it is following that path, but it gets shredded there. Looks like as uh, it heads... Uh, around the Puerto Rico area. There's another hurricane behind that one. It does look like both of them get shredded up and uh, really not holding steady. But, uh, you know, this is a ways out here as far as this forecast model goes. So definitely got to keep an eye on that barrel. And then uh, also um, the other tropical disturbance down here. But they're shooting off here in this direction. This one, eh... <clears throat> it's got a 40% chance, I guess, of uh, turning into something. 40% chance of uh, a cyclone formation there, but uh, I don't think we're seeing anything major going on. Looks like it's going to hit this area down in Mexico with a bunch more rain. These guys get a lot of rain. I wish we got half of the rain that they got down there in Mexico with these tropical systems up here in California. Um, you guys want to see some crazy stuff? Uh, we have some major heat coming up here. Big time heat. And uh, I'm not looking forward to it. We already got some heat advisories and whatnot. Uh, I think beginning Monday, we're going to be well up above um, 100, well, 104. That's not bad, to be honest. That's really not that bad. Uh, but things really start getting hotter out here across the Northern California area. 111 in Willows, 109 outside here where I live outside of Chico. And it only gets hotter as we head through the week. 113. Um, looks like a little bit of cool down there Thursday. Only 109. Uh, Friday heats back up. Um, Saturday, 100 and ye. That looks toasty. 115 all across. Widespread 115 across Sacramento Valley. San Joaquin Valley getting in on the heat as well. This is a, a no-joke type of heat. Uh, and then on Sunday, well, we cool back down to 111. I, goodness. Either way, um, it's going to be hot. So I'm going to be keeping everything nice and cool here in the computer room and throughout the house. Make sure I got... Uh, Plenty of fuel just in case uh, the power grid goes down. It's going to be a good test here on the uh, California power grid. Everyone's going to be blasting their ACs. Nobody really thinks about that until, you know, the things get strained against the power grid. And uh, just in case, I do have a good generator to keep everything running out here. But, uh, yeah, summertime. I'm ready for wintertime. I've been ready for winter. <laughs> since the past month or so i don't mind the temperatures um early on you know that some nice warm days get the garden going get it growing but uh, I'm, I'm a cool weather type of person i like the cool weather so maybe not this cold up here in greenland 10 degrees eh, or even further down south yeah i got some ice cold temperatures down there negative 47 colder way colder over here 100 degrees negative Woo. 
Negative 102. Wow. Got quite the winter going on down there, that's for sure. All right, folks. Um, I think that's about it. Um, hope everyone has a good night. The seismograph stations out here look pretty quiet for now. Again, keep an eye on, you know, Hawaii. There's a lot going on there underneath the ground, and we're seeing that earthquake activity really peak up here in the last couple days, and it's it's kind of pointing off in this general direction here. So we'll see what uh, takes place here soon enough, I'm sure. Have yourself a good Friday evening, and uh, we'll catch you guys back out here early in the morning for the Saturday morning update. Take care, folks.